Back in the Basement Written by Hair Proof Low ceiling, cold air, and a smell of moldy potatoes. Everything was as Tim remembered it. Nothing, Marin said. See? Even with all of her love, she'd finally lost patience. Gone the way his friends, parents, and therapist had gone before. That tone in her voice. I want to check it out, Tim said. Marin stroked his back. I'll wait in the car. When she was gone, he searched the corners. I know you're somewhere, he said. He wondered, did he mean his brother or the monster that had taken him 20 years ago when their grandmother locked him in this basement for setting fire to a farmer's bale of straw? She'd opened it by late afternoon and his brother was gone. Grandma had died shortly afterwards, leaving a house so full of tragedy nobody would ever buy it. Her death had been one of heart failure and feelings of guilt. In the long run, the monster had taken two of his family. Tim brought out the knife he'd hidden from Marin and stood with the blade in one and his phone flashlight in the other hand. I'm not afraid, he said the trembling light proving him a liar. Of course, the monster in the basement had been waiting for him to be alone. It had done the same to his brother. Today, however, it would end. Tim sniffed. There was a sour smell. Slight at first, then stronger. The monster stink. His heart began to race, and he turned around and around in search for the smell's origin. The trapdoor shut. Marin? Tim realized the walls looked moist, and as if they were moving. The air was so pregnant with sourness now, he could hardly breathe and went for the exit. He slipped flailing his arms to keep the balance. As he looked down, he saw the soles of his sneakers melting. The floor was wet with the fluid, the same as on the walls, the same sour smell. When the soles had dissipated, Tim's socks were no match for the corrosive liquid. It was at his skin now. It felt like cutting his feet with the razor first and then holding them into a bowl of boiling vinegar. Tim ran for the trapdoor on feet that he felt had no more soles, just like the sneakers. This time when he slipped, he fell. The liquid burned into his hands. He raised them and saw a bone moving as the skin of his palms was eaten away. It was a blurred view through eyes flooded by tears. When Tim inhaled now, a thousand needles pierced his lungs. Before the burning torment of being digested erased all rational thought, he couldn't help but realize they'd all been right. His parents, Marin, the therapist, everybody. There was no monster in this basement. Childhood Basement Written by Megacool 
It's been a while since I've stepped foot into this place. The decrepit basement of my childhood home. The tunnel and staircase that leads to the cobwebs below. I thought back to all the dread I felt emanating from here as a child. A forbidden place that I so vehemently resisted going near. I can remember the anxiety I felt when I gazed into the unlit, cryptic room below. Imaginary horrors and eldritch spiders lurking behind each step downwards. This place haunted the dreams of my youth. A constant presence that tickled the back of my brain. Of course, that was only when I was a kid. I'm a fully fledged adult now, unburdened by such childish horrors. I thought nothing of it when my dear mum asked me to come inspect her furnace and see if I could do anything to help her out during these frigid winter months. It's been so hard since Dad passed for all of us. This was the least I could do to help. So it was with a confident stride that I proceeded down the crooked, concrete steps, ignoring the slight pangs of woody that my memories insisted on giving me. I turned on my torch, illuminating the area with reassuring brightness of an LED. The room remained unchanged from how I remembered it. Tangible dust piling up on empty shelves and unused furniture. The scent of mothballs heavy in the clouded air. I continued onwards, proceeding to the grey furnace ahead. I recalled the way that the furnace would taunt me, making intermittent taps and glaring at me through its angry red grill. A hot topic of my fear. There were many a time when its intimidating grimace would chase me up the stairs, following me into my dreams. Now its eyes were unlit and its growl absent from the room. In a way, it felt even more sinister, a jarring aberration from what I was accustomed to. The silence was deafening. The ringing tinnitus and brooding groans of the house, my only company. I shine my light at the prehistoric heater before me, quickly finding the control panel. It was with a restrained chuckle that I found the power switch undeniably set to off. Classic mum, she never was good with technology. I smirked and turned the furnace on. Turning back towards the staircase, the sleeping iron beast awoke behind me, coming to life with furious tapping and a slight glow. My muffled footsteps pervaded the room, thick work boots sliding across the concrete floor. This always was my least favourite part. My childlike imagination ran away with me, my neck prickling as I thought of the monster staring at my unprotected back from the darkness. Only a childhood memory, I thought, continuing towards the stairway. So why? Why did I still have that familiar feeling? A frigid dread rested its weight upon my shoulders. A moist, clicking maw breathed deeply into my ear. You'll find